So we're going to hear from each of our three um, panellists in turn. It's my great pleasure to introduce um, Sir Howard Bernstein, Chief Executive of Manchester City Council. Sir Howard. Thanks very much, John. A great pleasure uh, to be here, indeed to be invited here. Actually, um, listening to Matthew's analysis and some of what uh, the Mayor, George, has, has actually already uh, told you, I, quite a lot of what I was going to say has actually become redundant. So what, what I want to do really is, well, people will say, how we want you to give a very distinctive analysis about what Manchester uh, is about and what Manchester does. And just picking up some of the threads from the contributions I know you've already had, let me just bring together three or four uh, key points. Matthew's already talked about the way in which you address uh, an integrated approach within place about how you address uh, a whole range of priorities, whether it's about growth, whether it's around heritage, which I think is a fundamental part of a place's economic strategy. One of the things I want to address is that wider global market within which any place has to sit because without understanding what that global market is, uh, then very clearly our own growth ambitions as places are, uh, are in my view, uh, seriously uh, prejudiced. Um, Manchester is fortunate to be one of the top 600 cities in the world. Um, uh, but over the next decade, uh, a piece of work done for us by Jim O'Neill, um, you know, very famous economist, used to be chairman of Goldman Sachs uh, Asset Management. What Jim was saying to us was that over the next 10 years, at least 200 of those 600 cities in the world are going to change, and at least 100 new ones uh, would actually emerge from the Far East uh, alone. That gives you a real sense of the particular challenges that Manchester, any of our other big cities in this country, or indeed other big cities in Europe, have to face. And therefore, in, in addressing what our particular challenges are, what our particular priorities are in moving forward, we have to address what our distinctive uh, role can be, what are the key uh, distinguishing elements of our strategy which is capable of supporting and deepening and diversifying our business base. Uh, that is the bedrock upon which places like Manchester, I think, have worked very, very effectively over the last uh, 10 years or so. Uh, and more particularly, one of the reasons why increasingly we now look not just within the city, we look more as to the economic geography of Greater Manchester because we recognise that how we drive that economic geography in terms of the productivity of our labour market will influence the overall economic competitiveness of our area. That is a fundamental part of where we are. Secondly, uh, increasingly it's also about connectivity. Uh, it is about connectivity between cities. Uh, we talk uh, about transport investment, we talk about the globalization of, uh, of the, and the role that London plays in the UK economy. Uh, we can, I, I'm a passionate advocate of uh, a growing London uh, because I think it's vital not just uh, for, for the UK, I actually believe it's actually vital for Europe uh, in the context of the global trends I, I've just discussed earlier. But it's also the case that we have other places outside London which have the capacity, they have the potential to be national engines of, uh, of growth. Uh, Manchester is one of those, all the big cities, Leeds, Sheffield, Birmingham, Liverpool, Newcastle, uh, Bristol, are also uh, got that potential. And how we connect ourselves uh, in terms of uh, investment in, in freight, investment in transport, roads, rail, is going to be, I believe, a fundamental influence over the way in which cities and the UK economy can perform over the next 10 years. Getting all of that right is, in my view, an absolute prerequisite to the sort of places that we want to, that we want to create. And within that context, how individual places work with communities, how individual places work with key stakeholders to develop that strong integrated approach which celebrates the role, the contribution which heritage actors make within uh, a place like Manchester or other places is of course 
an absolute prerequisite. I often go to conferences and talk about Manchester's approach to community engagement and get told that I haven't got an approach to community engagement until I find out that the people who make that accusation uh, are basically people I don't agree with about particular uh, types of initiatives. And what I just want to do is bring into very, very sharp focus some of the key dilemmas, some of the key choices in the time that I have left in order to be able to demonstrate why I believe we need a, a, a wider fundamental debate. First of all, you take a building like the London Road uh, Fire Station, redundant, one of the most important assets within the city, working very constructively with English Heritage. We have a great working relationship with English Heritage. Um, for CPOs, and my judgment effectively was substituted for a judgment by an inspector. That building still remains undeveloped to this day. So we need to question the extent to which our national planning uh, policies, our national uh, strategies are capable of supporting local places in driving heritage priorities. Another example which where we work with the Museum of Science and Industry, uh, Northern, uh, the great new Northern Hub, so new cord coming through, actually uh, starts to affect the impact of George Stevenson's Great Bridge. Uh, lots of preservationists saying you can't touch it at all. We actually took the decision because we had to make that decision that actually uh, the connectivity requirements of Manchester overrode all of that. And actually what was going to be uh, left would have been a celebration of, uh, of, of engineering. And that's what uh, people would have wanted to see. One more example, uh, and that is um, uh, Victoria Baths. Uh, an excellent example, lots of hugely enthusiastic, sincere people working incredibly hard to try and preserve something that, in my view, cannot be preserved. Uh, and what we have to do is work very closely with organisations, work very, very closely in order to ensure that as we make choices, those choices are being made to support uh, not just the transformation of places, but also how we celebrate heritage in the future. Thank you.